This week at Starbase, Ship 37's nose cone and payload bay are moved into Mega Bay 2, work continues on the tank farm expansion and the Pad B deluge system, high bay demolition begins, and a massive concrete pour takes place at Pad B's flame trench. Now let's dig into this week's update. Friday began with Buckner's crane continuing its disassembly of the SpaceX crane, taking apart the main boom one section at a time. More support stands for the propellant's farm cryogenic pump station hardware arrived at the launch site to be unloaded and installed. Stands that were delivered a few days earlier were also installed. Two new segments of large diameter pipe were brought to the launch site and headed into the main gate. Meanwhile, another one of the vaporizers damaged in Flight 8 was loaded onto a truck and hauled away. Another boom segment was taken off SpaceX's crane as workers continued to dismantle it. A cryo pipe section was lifted for installation into the newly installed stands but was removed a few minutes later. Welding robots likely taken out of the high bay were brought out of Starbase. One of the crane boom segments was hauled out of the launch site and taken up the road to the storage yard. Test Tank 16 departed the Massey outpost on Saturday morning and was brought back to the build site. The tank was then brought to the Sanchez site and set down in the rocket garden. We also saw concrete being poured between Highway 4 and the pumping station. This may be the footing for a new wall. A new pump sump was moved into the launch site ahead of placement inside of the new cryogenics pump station. Crews finished reinstalling the Marscape mural outside of the parking garage. The previous mural was taken down and replaced after the parking garage walls were damaged in the high winds. Speaking of high winds, several traffic cones tried to make a run for it at the build site, creeping up to the main gate and almost escaping onto Highway 4 before workers pulled them out of the road. Another section of large diameter water deluge pipe was delivered to the launch site as workers continued the rapid build out of Pad B. This new bowl shaped object was delivered to the build site. It looks similar to an installation jig or rotating work stand, but we're not entirely sure what it is. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Another support stand and another long length large diameter deluge pipe section were delivered to the launch site. Starship 37's nose cone and payload section emerged from Star Factory and headed towards Mega Bay 2. The ship section was missing several courses of heat shield tile as well as some of the backup ablative heat shielding material that goes underneath the tiles. Crews began stacking additional stands for tank farm hardware at the cryo pumping station on Sunday morning. A sump pump for the third liquid oxygen pump was set down inside the scaffolding at the cryogenic pump station. The liquid oxygen pump itself was installed a couple of hours later. Temporary construction fencing was set up in front of the high bay, blocking off the B2 gate at the build site. A temporary barrier was also set up on the sidewalk, fully closing off this part of the Star Factory. With the ring yard cleared and closed off now, SpaceX looks to be using it as both a safety and staging area as they dismantle high bay. The bollards were then raised at the front entrance and the B2 gate was officially closed. Additional construction fencing was set up parallel to Star Factory, keeping personnel and equipment out of the demolition areas. Concrete pumps began setting up by Pad B as crews began the final preparation for the long-awaited pour of the launch pad's flame trench. The first of over 300 concrete loads arrived in the evening. Several dozen trucks would arrive each hour to fill the flame trench's foundations. A third concrete pump began setting up just after midnight on Monday morning to speed up the pour, then backed up to leave about seven hours later. Another subcooler, which will be used to chill the propellants during vehicle loading, was delivered to the launch site. Two loads of steel trench covers were delivered to the launch site to cover over the extensive underground utilities servicing the launch site's two pads. Upward-facing elbow pipe fittings continued to be installed to feed each of the new pumps. And a ring of 10 thrust rams was lifted into the test cell at the Massey outpost to simulate flight loads for Super Heavy's ring of 10 engines. A test plate for the booster propellant loading and pressurization interface was installed on the quick disconnect fitting at Pad A. Over at Sanchez, crews were working on the water cooling manifold for the Pad B launch mount. 
A subcooler exhaust line was installed for the tank farm expansion, while two more pumps were delivered to the launch site. The newest subcooler was brought over and lifted into place a few minutes later. 27 hours and 20 minutes and 303 concrete trucks later, the second pump truck finished placing concrete inside the center floor of the flame trench shortly after midnight on Tuesday morning. The pump was then packed up and sent home a few minutes later. Crews began removing windows from the high bay as demolition of the structure began in earnest. With the later arrival of a Libra LTM-11200 crane, SpaceX seems to be planning to demolish the high bay one section at a time, with the crane placing sections in the cleared ring yard for scrapping. A booster cap used to keep the elements out of Super Heavy's avionics bay was brought into Mega Bay 1 for placement on Booster 15. Another section of large diameter deluge pipe with an elbow was delivered to the launch site. The booster transport stand was brought out from Sanchez and staged in the ring yard before being moved in front of Mega Bay 1. Here we can see a manifold section of the water deluge system being delivered to the launch site. This segment divides the deluge flow into separate lines for the subsections of the pad's cooling and sound dampening systems. The feed manifold line for the liquid oxygen pumps was also lifted into place. Demolition work began on the covered patio area next to the Stargate building as a worker broke down and cut up the roof and its cross members for recycling. A second section of the water distribution pipe manifold was also delivered to the launch site. After spending the day outside of Mega Bay 1, the booster transport stand was brought inside on Wednesday morning. A new crane from Barry, a name that will be familiar to longtime viewers, arrived at the build site to assist with demolition. We then saw Stargate's annex being toppled as demolition advanced. The third of the massive liquid oxygen pump motors was uncrated and installed on the pump station. A hole was cut in High Bay's roof, providing an access point for moving people and material in and out of the structure. Mega Bay 1's front door was open, revealing Booster 15 inside. Booster 15 was moved out of the High Bay a few hours later. Coming out into the sun, the coloration of the metal makes the hot spots very obvious. Once the booster was outside the bay, the grid fins were reset to their neutral position. The booster was then rolled out of the Sanchez site, making its way to the rocket garden. From what we've gathered, Booster 15 is under evaluation for use in a future mission. The chopsticks at Pad B underwent a short lifting test, rising a bit less than halfway up the tower. They were lowered back down to the hard stop a few hours later. In the early hours, sunrise revealed that more glass had been removed from the top of High Bay. Here we can see another liquid oxygen pump being delivered to the launch site. It's been speculated that five units are expected to drive the liquid oxygen side of the propellant loading system. The Barry Crane Company's LTM-11200 was brought to the build site and is expected to join the demolition of High Bay. With its test campaign complete at Massey's now, Booster 16 began rolling back to the production site down Highway 4 overnight and into Friday. The B2 gate was cleaned up and opened ahead of the booster's arrival. Booster 16 arrived at the production site a few minutes later and crews quickly put the construction fence back in place blocking off the gate. Switching over to Florida, Starlink operations this week included the return of fairing halves and Booster 1069 from the G12-21 mission, as well as launch and recovery for the Group 12-16 mission and Booster 1078. The Starlink Group 12-25 mission was also successfully launched this week. Also taking place this week, SpaceX launched their Crew-10 mission aboard Crew Dragon Endurance, the capsule's fourth mission to the ISS. The Booster Falcon 9 1090 successfully landed at LZ-1. And just four days after Endurance's arrival at the station, Butch and Sonny from the Starliner mission, along with the other two members of Crew-9, boarded the Dragon Capsule Freedom and returned to Earth. This ended a more than nine-month stay at the station for Butch and Sonny. The crew successfully splashed down in the Gulf near Tallahassee and were greeted by a pod of dolphins during the recovery operations by the MV Megan. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.